right here, and you're like, well, what the fuck is that all about? So hopefully this panel is about explaining all the sort of terms and things so you understand if somebody says art, oh, you know what that is. So I said art to Jenny, but no idea. <laughs> uh, so let's start at the beginning. <laughs> I told you this is a book Publishing journey. So it, it's not always like this, but a, a standard publishing journey looks a little bit like this. You start off with a book. You write a book. <laughs> Yay! Book that's finished. You write the end. You've lost me already. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then you have to query the book. And then you get an agent. And then you go on sub. And then you get an author. And then you get to do editing. And then you've got a published book. <laughs> and that all sounds very simple and straightforward, and trust me, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so terms you might come across when you're querying. So when you're querying your book, you're sending it out to literary agents and saying, hey, I've got a book, do you want to represent me to publishers? Yes, please, please, dear God, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you send out a query. And a query is a letter sent to agents and it details the book, uh, short summary, doesn't spoil the ending, tells them the word count, the genre, the audience that you're going for, and it all has to fit in about 350 words. <laughs> so, writing a query letter is a skill. Um, I have got a list of resources, quite a lot of resources at the end of this. Um, so, manuscript, and that is your digital copy of the book. It means nearly always these days a .doc or a PDF. And standard um, publishing uh, requirements is 12 point font, 1 inch margins, double space. Usually in something like uh, Times New Roman. Um, not Comic Sans then. Not, not <laughs> <laughs> We're off the papyrus. Papyrus. Yeah. <laughs> you want them to say yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can write it in whatever, you can write it in Wendy, so that makes you happy. You <laughs> 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 send it out, you can send it out like this. You look at it It makes you happy. Part of the challenge is reading it. So, what is an agent? An agent is a third party contracted to go between you and publishing houses. Most publishing houses, certainly the big ones, will want you to have an agent because they don't want to deal with unsolicited manuscripts. They don't want everybody sending in their manuscripts because they have small and smaller workforces, and more and more things to do, and they just they don't have the time in these days. So, the agent would be somebody you find yourself rather so, than yeah. somebody who's assigned to you. Yes, the agent you find yourself. You know, how, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you do that? Right. That is a good question. Yeah. You basically want to look, there are a few places you can look. Books are a good place to look um, because they, they often get the uh, agent listed in the acknowledgements page. Um, there's a site called Manuscript Wishlist which details what agents want. Uh, you can Google literary agent and then go through um, on Twitter, you can search the uh, literary agent on Twitter, you can see which ones are active, um, and they'll often say whether they're open for queries or not. Uh, Query Tracker is a database website where you can, you can put in what you're querying and keep track of things, but it also lists agents and what general genres they are after. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, there's a book called The Authors and the Yeah, yeah. Yep, there's also Which, that. Yes, I get it from the library. Don't yes, buy it. yeah, don't buy it because it's like, I mean, when I got it, uh, yeah, when I got it like 10 years ago, it was about 15 quid, so it's like double that now. My name is that So yeah. So those are the sort of places to look. Mm -hmm. Then you go, once you've got an idea from those sort of places, you then go to find them on the website, check if they're open, if they're actually after what various other places have said, because these things are really up to date. And they, they, researching them is a, is a big job. And then you'll get a list of them. I, you can use something like Query Tracker. I just have a spreadsheet, put in your agent, their email address, whether they were whether they had a form on their website, or whether you emailed them their response um, and then just keep track of all the queries and unless you get lucky you will be sending out a fuck ton of queries. Mm -hmm. um, How long did it take you? It took me um, it took me about ten years for the five year break. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, the first ones before the break they were probably not quite ready. Um, and then COVID hit and everybody was writing a book and suddenly it was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. seriously, yeah. COVID hit Everybody wrote a book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm assuming when you say the synopsis, it needs to be in the same format as the Yeah, yeah, yeah gen so you generally 12 point, 12 point, one Yeah, one in 12 points. Yeah, one in 12 points. Typically, a synopsis and a query letter will be single space with a, a line between the paragraphs yeah. rather than double space. But yeah. If a synopsis is a single page, how short should the short summary be? The short summary is generally the whole thing is about 350 words. Yeah. That includes okay. here, how many words it is, it gives you a little bit like, it's me. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's typically three paragraphs. I've got a query letter in a minute, um, so oh, we'll see how how long one was. Um, metadata. So when people are talking about metadata, they're talking about the statistics and the manuscripts. So things like your word count, your audience, uh, your genre. Um, so things that an agent will see quickly and go, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, I'll read more about what it's about, or you know, I don't want fancy at the moment, so. Uh, off the front of the session. Yeah. By, by comps, do you mean comparative? Yes, comparative titles. titles. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Um, I should probably put that in as a separate thing. Yes, comparative titles. So generally, you want to be saying to the um, agent that look, other people are, are buying books like this. These books are on the shelves. My book fits in there, so that when they then go to publishers, they can go, yes, I've got this thing. You sold this. This is, you know, readers of that will like this. So you should buy this. Um, if something needs something. Yeah. Elevated text. Yeah. Can, can you compare it to other things like, oh, this is, this will remind you of Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I, I mentioned the Witcher series in one, so, mm. yeah. yeah. You generally want at least one fairly recent book that sort of last five years. But yes, it is, it is people have used uh, TV, uh, even songs. Yeah, just a quick question. Does that come before the writing of the book or after? Often people recommend doing it first because it's a good, you don't have to, but it, you, you can, it's a good way of seeing is your summary workable. Mm -hmm. If you can get a good query letter out of it, you can probably get a good book out of it. Whereas if you can't, you can get, you can get to the bottom and go, yeah, this sounds a bit muddy, you might not have yeah. thought it through properly. So it is, it is quite useful to go and do this as an exercise first. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Yes, offer the presentation when the agent agrees to represent you. And the call is when you generally get a phone or a Zoom call with the agent where you discuss. And this is before you sign on, they'll give you a call, they'll go through what they think of the book, who they think they can sell it to. And sometimes you will have two or three or even more uh, agents who say, yes, we'll represent you. So you, you want to talk to them and make sure that their vision for the book is what you want for the book. You want to make sure that you're going to work together well. Because um, your, your agent is your line between you and the publishing industry, and the publishing industry will chew you up, so you want a good agent as a go between. Mm -hmm. Generally, an agent is permanent, isn't there? Unless it goes to yes, the there are some that say they sign you on for a book, but it's generally on the agreement that they'll sign you on for the next book. So, yeah, you generally you, you're aiming to keep that agent, but people do swap between them. They change journals, the agent leaves, and you find out that they, they don't work together that well. Um, so, so would agents mainly focus on a specific genre then? You were saying if often, they change genre, yeah, they, they change often agents. have two or three that they focus on. Yeah. Or those, yeah. yeah. So like my agent does fantasy, she does romance, uh, she does like YA fantasy, yeah, so but she doesn't do um, like little picture books and things. Yeah, so. There's three genres you just mentioned, there's quite a lot of crossover. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So it's really about finding the agent that works for what you well, yeah. yeah, so you want an agent that's got good connections to editors in the genres that you write in. Yeah. Um, and you want one that, that works with you. And it's a good idea to speak to their current clients and say, you know, yeah. how, how good is your agent at responding? You send them an email, <laughs> how good is the agent at replying? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, some of them will wait. My, my agent's 
pretty good. As long as it's not a weekend, she doesn't do. If she's out of office, she's out of office. I respect her for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. My editor just sent me stuff at three in the morning. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Are you right? Are you right? Are you right? <laughs> um, so, so, is for, but what counts as a genre? Is like, for example, is queer a genre to them? Um, if I wrote a queer fantasy, time, should I look for yeah. queer romance agents or should I look for fantasy agents? I, I would look for fantasy agents who have clients who've written queer books. Mm -hmm. um, then you know that they yeah. the, there are a lot of people who've been in publishing for a long time and they're not necessarily always all on the level. So particularly mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, um, black, Asian and, and other non-white authors, you want to make sure that they've got clients who are not white. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably want to, if you only got an author, you probably want to make sure your agent isn't has a very narrow demographic because that mm -hmm. just probably means they're not a great person. Yeah, yeah. So you know, there, there are all these extra things that you've got to be aware of if you're a marginalised author. You know, if you're if you're a neurodivergent author, there are agents who are neurodivergent or have neurodivergent clients. So it's worth speaking. You know, if that's a thing, it's worth saying can I speak to a client. Um, and see how they feel that the agent deals with the issues mm -hmm. that they have. Yeah. Um, so speaking to clients is a uh, is a very important thing um, because you're getting you're not getting the sales pitch from the agent. You're getting yeah, this is someone I work with every day. Here's what they're actually like. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an example. Of, like I said, I will get these online, so don't worry. You can't read the text. The important bits and the colours. So this is my pitch. Um, so it's a short one sentence thing that sums up the book. This is my metadata, so we've got a 95k generally round up to the nearest thousand words. You don't bother putting the whole thing. Um, we've got um, book book titles um, and the Witch series, so it's not necessarily just books. And a content warning. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I like yeah, so I think these uh, content warnings are quite important. I made my editor put content warning in the book. Yeah. Um, just, you know, the, the standard stuff, um, you know, violence, uh, the sentence of the soul, the child, death, and death. It's, it's worth putting that in this part. Um, and then at the bottom is my little bit about me. And you can tell that this was a while ago because I put toddler and I could tell seven. Publishing, <laughs> <laughs> long time. So, when you've got your agent, you can then go on submission. So, see here are some of the terms that you will find when you are on stuff. So, submission, the act of sending out manuscripts to agencies. And this is what the agent will do. Um, you don't generally include it in these emails or conversations. These are, you either have a phone call or they have an email and say, look, I've got this book, are you interested? And hopefully the agent will say, yes, send it to me. Or they might go, no, we've got something a bit too much like that. Uh, and you'll generally have a start off list of the biggest ones that you want to get to and then if they say no then you'll go out again on another round to maybe slightly smaller publishers um, and then you might decide well, do we go for much smaller ones where you might not get an advance, you might not get the same marketing or do you want to pull this and start with something new. So that's a uh, submission. <laughs> yes, so all the functions can be nicer people, but they don't have the same resources, and small publishers go under all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a problem there, that they, yeah. sometimes they are, they are very well intentioned, but not that yeah. good business. They, 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 they can be lovely people, but if they don't have, you know, they can't keep the business going. There are great small publishers, um, and then they generally get booked out. But they, you know, there are risks to sort of small ones. Yeah, it's, it's hard to run a business when you're very kind. Yes. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's just the how, how things are. Yeah. So the proposal is basically is a lot like a query package. It's what the agent uh, will then send to the editor. Yes. If a publisher does go under, what happens to like the ownership and process? It depends on your contract. Mm. And if your contract's not well written, it can be that that book is gone. Because if they haven't got a reversion clause, then it, the, the, the rights will probably go to whoever buys the assets of the failed publisher. Um, so yeah, it might be if you've got a reversion clause, they can get the rights back 
and you can send it to somebody else or self-publish it. If your contracts are not great, then this, this, this can be a real problem. Um, we'll always get that legal yes, one of the things you know, if you've got an agent, yeah. the agent will read the contract and go, we need this clause, we need that clause, but a fucking AI clause in it. Yeah, the company that sells it to Spotify is like, yeah, no. Um, some lists. So this is the list of editors and imprints that you will send it to. Sometimes you'll send it to an editor and imprint and they'll go, actually, I think my colleague would like that more. That's what happened with my book. We sent it to our editor and she sent it on to her colleague and her colleague went, yep, I'll have that. Um, <laughs> So are editors associated with the publishers or are they also yes, editors? Yes, edi editors in this case are associated with the publisher. Right. So you know, every publishing imprint will have yeah, right. their own employed editors. Right. Um, there are freelance editors for later things, which I'll come to, but yes, yes these are employees of the publishing house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and R and R also turns up in querying and revising and submit. So we like this, but we want these changes, we want to make the romance higher, we want to take out the romance, we want to give it a tighter ending. And you're not obliged to do these, you might go, yeah, that doesn't work with my book. Um, and then you're not obliged to do these, you might go, yeah, that doesn't work with my book. Um, and then you'll be like, well, okay, that edit's not the right one for the book. Um, or you might go, actually, that's a genius idea, we'll rewrite it, resubmit it, and then hopefully they'll go, yes, but they don't want it. Acquisitions. This is when your editor goes, I've got this great manuscript, I love it, I think it will sell millions. Hey, sales team, can I have some budget for this? And it's heartbreaking when you get to this point, you've got someone who will buy this book, and sales go, no. Um, I've, I've seen so many people get to get to that point, and, and the acquisition meeting falls through. And it's, it's so close and yet so far. Uh, option. This is when multiple editors go, I want that, and another editor goes, I want that, and I've never been in one, so I can't tell you exactly what happens. I don't think they all sit in a room and go, this many, this many, I think it's, it's more that they go, here's our proposal, here's what we give you, and the other ones will do that, and then I think you get to choose, I yeah. hope you get to choose. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, a preempt is when uh, an editor sees a book, thinks there's going to be an auction, I'm going to stick a lot of money up front. Mm -hmm. um, so preempt's good. <laughs> I didn't go preempt. <laughs> Advance. The amount of money offered up front for the rights of the book. Uh, the small, uh, in smaller publishing, you might not get anything. Uh, generally for a first book it's quite low, unless they think you're young, pretty and very marketable, and then you could get, you know, a six-figure sum. Um, but yes, it's, it's not generally on the quality of the book, it's more on what they think they can sell off, um, what are the cash in the unit. Um, right, so what is the right publisher purchasing from you? And that is the rights to uh, the physical types of books, so is that a hardback, ebook, audiobook, and where are we going to sell it? Is it just going to be in the UK? Is it going to be in the English speaking world? Is it going to be worldwide? Um, so that's your rights and that's what they're buying. And the deal is the whole thing. Um, so the rights, the advance, the number of books. Um, and often you'll, you'll send them one book and they'll go, yes, we'll buy this and another one off you. And that might be the sequel, it might be another standalone. My second one's going to be another standalone. Being a sequel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I have to convince them to let me buy it, to, to let me write a sequel. But um, so we still have my second yes, please. <laughs> 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 right to Hobbit Scape. Right to Hobbit Scape and demand, yeah. I will. Yeah. So that's. And when things get announced, they never get announced with the money. You get so and so bought a book by author for a nice deal. A good deal, a major deal, and that's roughly what they <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Which, do you know if I ask which one you were? I am probably still. That's okay. This is okay. Yeah, this is okay. And again, it is a day view, so hopefully if it sells well by my book, um, yeah. they'll, um, they'll let me buy, they'll buy more books off me and we've got more money. Um, that's the plan. Okay, so publication terms. You've got your book, 
you've got your agent, you've got your deal from your editor, what happens next? So, first thing you'll do is a development edit. And there is, this will be the thing that you discuss with the editor before you sign anything, and they'll say any large scale changes that they want, um, anything to the plot and the structure. So I wrote, wrote about the last third of mine, so that the climax is a lot more, it was a lot more strung out when I had it. Um, so now it's a lot tighter and there's a lot more forward momentum. So that's a big thing. Um, and the other thing... There's someone online complaining about the, the, the development edit, they wanted to change the main character to a woman. Mm. That's the sort oh, of no, thing. from a woman to a man. Yeah, that's Ooh. the sort of thing you want to check before you sign, because yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, and the other thing was there's, there's little interludes in the book. I think one of the five in mine was like there's ten in the three versions. You get like the full relationship now. Yes. Um, so things like that, if you don't do event, the event development edit, I can't talk. <laughs> uh, Alone edit. So that's when you've got the structure set, but you might want to rephrase things to take out. Um, to, to make things a bit clearer, to get the world building a bit down a bit more, to make the character's voice a bit more distinct. So you're not making huge changes to the plot. Yes. Also, if you're writing to the like middle grade or YA, quite often it's, no, this, this word is too advanced. You yes. need to, yeah. you, oh, need yeah. a, you need a simpler <laughs> word. word. Yes, yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm copying it. Uh, mostly focus on continuity. I did have a character's nose change colour at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, things like that they look out for. Um, she also, I, I had mentioned about Adam's apple, and she well, that's, that's come from a Christian term. This is a Second World Fantasy book. Do you want that in there? Oh. Yeah. Scrap that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you yeah. didn't think about stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's what the copy edit did. Who gave this fantasy world to Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, <laughs> when, that's, when, that's when you take the talking, the uh, Pratchett approach, and you just name it after the doctor that discovered the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, you know, you've got options. You can either work something like that in, or you can squirt the line. Mm -hmm. um, the copy editor is often someone third party. Um, they'll come in, and it's a fresh set of eyes, um, and they'll they'll see things that, that you and the editor have found to spot. I proof edit, fucking covers. <laughs> and uh, I've been writing for them for like over 10 years. Well, I still. <laughs> yeah, well, on sentences. Is that semicolon in the right place? So it's very minor things. At this point, the book is usually typeset. So your proof edits are, will come in a PDF or, or sometimes a physical document. Um, and it's just, you know, put the comma in the right place very seriously. Um, <laughs> So I need more year sevens every day. Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on, hey, come on. It's, it's pretty. pretty cover. Cover. It's very. Uh, yeah. So it's the artistic vibe. It's the the front, the back, the spine. Uh, so things like so you've got the back design. You've got your insert of the blurb. You've got your author photos. So all that. Does it have a um, under the dust jacket? Does it doesn't have, have anything particularly pretty, but the spine is in <laughs> Do you get much of the same? Yeah, yeah, so it, it very much depends on the publisher has. Again, smaller mm. imprints, you're more likely to get a feedback. Mm -hmm. So one of my friends has a book coming out with Peach Team next year, Peach Tree Team next year, um, and they and the editor have been discussing possible artists they're going to hire. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I got told your cover designer is this, your cover artist is this. But they did send me every time they got to a stage, they'd send it to me and say, Do you like this? I need to be honest, it's. I don't know, I said yes. It I think it's chocolate, so I love it. Yeah. Um, we, we did discuss colours, so the initial colour, colour palette was a lot redder, mm -hmm. um, and then we, we, she did us various options. We did purple pink, we did a more purple, less pink one, um, and that was one we ended up settling on. Um, the second one had the I, can, I can say from the experience of my friends, if you really care what your cover looks like, make sure you specify that in your contract yeah. somehow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, you may get your black protagonist may be white on the cover, oh. Oh. and you don't, and they don't listen when you say that's not right. right. Oh, or they yeah. say either gender or your cover. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So oh, your, no, your, no, your no, contract. Or you get two two, two quite middle aged watch ladies who are both in ball gowns on the cover. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So let's bring more hands. And they're both in ball bounds. Yeah. So your contract will generally my mine stipulates that I get I don't get control over it, but I can I can I get to make change. They have to run it past me. Are you able to get across how different your original manuscript is compared to the post-proof edit? Um, like, it, it still feels like your book, right? But yeah. is it like, do you know what, actually I couldn't have written that on my own, it's just yeah, significantly so. different. Yeah, I mean, this one is closer, I would say that the ending was, was rewritten, but it, it's still the same ending, it's just events got moved around just to sort of make the, the forward momentum a bit more. The next book is a lot different. Um, actually, we have a release date for the next book. Yes, nineteenth of November. Oscar awesome. for Christmas. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so. <laughs> I just I do. So. So, this is a document I'm working on at the moment. So, all the red bits are changes, uh, all the green bits are moved around bits. Um, you can see all the comments. So, oh my god. <laughs> so, there's, there's a lot of No spoilers, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like you've got to be really like, you've got to yeah, you've be got to be in it. Queenie yeah. Yeah. Because if I see that, I'm just going to go home and cry and yeah. do it again. It's, it's, sort of it's, it's, you, have to, you have to, and the editor's, the editor's vision has to gel with you. Um, and yeah. we, we did have, she basically, she sent me her edit notes and I looked at these and went, you're asking me to write a new book. So we had had lots of conversations back and forth with like, no, I yeah. want to keep these aspects. Mm -hmm. um, so. So there is a negotiation. There is a negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're not just going to throw yeah. it back. My friend got a twelve thousand word dev edit letter, oh. Oh. and that that was a lot. That, that was a lot. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I thought when they basically just change everything you've written, and you're like, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. 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 And then I've worked that into keeping the story the same. So I, I do agree with a lot of her points. I just didn't agree with how she suggested to do them. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you can see there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So there's an entire chapter. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is this is um, the end of Act Two, and then uh, there's going to be like three or four new chapters at the beginning of, of Act Three. Um, so yes. It can be quite different. Oh. <laughs> Guess what my favourite show is? Fucking <laughs> angry I am at HBO. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, right. So we get to a couple of edits. Proof edits. Come on. Blurb. So, yeah, blurb is one of these terms that all mean different things to different people. Generally, a blurb is when another author says, I love this book, and that gets put on the front cover, uh, um, you know, I love this book, French author. Um, it can also mean um, the description of the book. Mm -hmm. That also sometimes gets referred to as a blurb. Um, Something interesting I recently found out, when you get like, this book is awesome, such and such famous person, they've probably not even read your book. Some of them don't, <laughs> some, <laughs> some of the very big ones don't, but yeah. I mean, I, I've got one to read, and if I've read it, I'm, I'm going to read it, but um, yeah, some of the very big ones don't, they just put them in They don't get paid to put something on, <laughs> they don't pay me. <laughs> 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 they don't just give you a free copy of the book. Yeah. If you're lucky, you'll get a, um, a physical copy, if not, you'll get an e-book. A proof or arc is a, an advanced copy that's sent out. I can bring an arc in. Um, sometimes, most days, 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 uh, they are just digital copies. Um, but sometimes, especially if you're big and famous, you, you'll get a physical one. We get a few physical ones sent out, but not very many. 
um, and they're sent out for early reviews, we send them to um, sometimes to other authors, sometimes to publications like um, Publishers Weekly and uh, Kirkus and things like that. Um, and sometimes you'll, you'll send them out to uh, big book reviewing sites. And the idea is you're generating a buzz about the book before it comes out. Um, there's, also, there's also sites like NetGalley and Adobe's um, where it will go up there and you can download it if they like you. Um, also, if you've got author friends, slide into their DMs and say, and then you go, this book is coming out, it's amazing, you should buy it. Are you sending any answers to the two? Uh, yes, hopefully. Um, <laughs> it should be. It should be uh, we're aiming to get it up on NetGalley by the end of May. Hopefully. I can finish these edits in time. Uh, publication date. When the book can be sold. Um, sometimes this is really strict and um, Bookshops will all have an embargo and they cannot sell a book before that day. Um, sometimes it's not that strict and they'll have it in stock um, you know, a week beforehand and you ask for it and they'll sell it to But yes, it's generally a Tuesday, sometimes it's a Thursday, it's generally a Tuesday books come out. We're going to kind of sell them early. Yeah. Probably shouldn't. Um, yes, yeah, so like, <laughs> <laughs> like a Waterstone ship typically pre orders like a week before the publication due. Oh, I've got your book. I'm like, you what? Amazon parts and so on. <laughs> so, when you get paid in advance, that is initially the only money you'll get for that book until you earn out. And that's when the book has earned enough money to cover that initial advance. Um, so, and then you'll start earning royalties on each individual sale. So if you've got a big advance, that can take a while, or it can, it can be quite quick if the book's like a bestseller. Um, but yeah, so you don't earn royalties until you've earned an equivalent amount to the advance that they've paid you. Um, edition, the format of the book, so that's a hardback. Uh, you can get uh, e-books, uh, paperbacks, audiobooks. Um, you sometimes get different types of paper. You can get a, a trade paperback and a mass market paperback, which are different standards of sizes. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the format of the book. Uh, and royalties is when you, once you've earned out, is the payment you start getting, and your contract should um, stipulate what you get per each edition of the book. Um, so you'll earn different amounts from different things. Are you getting a paperback? Yes, the paperback should be out in July, I'm going to say. Um, It'll be the same cover. Because everybody loves the cover, so the same cover, it'll just be a paperback version. So, uh, well, if royalties are per book, I assume it's not all that much per book. It very much depends. Um, yeah. Like some people will get a call for a million, some people will get a thousand. It's wildly variable. Fair enough. And if, if you think like querying is hard, but the mental state of knowing that somebody has written a book, um, then it could be very similar to you, but they've got you know, hundreds of pounds more, hundreds of times more advanced a year, it can be really hard to, you know, why do the books are shit? What's wrong with it? Why would you sell it? Yeah, book as well. It's yeah, the book top. Top. So there, 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 there's a lot of factors, yeah. and a lot of it is completely unrelated to the quality of the book. Um, Advertising is the real fun Yes, it's a good Does edition, do editions get like, Determined at the contact stage, or like, can you have like a really good like contact and then you say, Oh, you want to make fun as the other book? Sorry, the edition, the edition is yet determined at the contact stage, or so and so. It's not that it's a good thing, or like, you could do a really good contact and then you say, Oh, I want to have an audio book. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they might, they might buy the rights for the the hardback and the paperback, and if it does well, they might then want to buy <coughs> from the audio, but or somebody else might pick up the audio notes. Excuse me. Yes. Stop buying it. So, so, resources. Um, publishing Radio is probably one of the best um, podcasts for publishing. It is um, Sonia Dean and I can't remember who her colleague is, but they were both tour um, authors 
and Sunny got a reasonable advance, and she got a that looks really good, but she got a she got a good deal, and the publisher was pushing it, and she's writing more books. Her colleague got a much smaller advance. They did absolutely no marketing for him, and he's pretty much got out of publishing. Um, and publishing radio is about the realities of publishing. Um, and it's quite depressing at times. But it's definitely one of the best um, publishing radio podcasts. Query Shark is um, an agent who goes to you can send her a query letter. She will go through it with a red pen. And it's really good because you get to see basically her thoughts in real time on these query letters saying what works to her and what doesn't. Um, and it's quite interesting because sometimes you'll get ones that don't fit the standard format and she'll go, yeah, this isn't how I'd recommend doing it, but it worked, I'd request that because I found it interesting. Mm. Um, so, Pitch Wars was a mentoring um, event, so it used to pair up uh, authors with querying authors and get them ready for an ancient showcase. That's finished, but the site is still there, and there are a lot of resources on that site. Um, this is the best guide I found to writing a long page synopsis ever. Um, that's the one I always go to. Uh, it's a query tracker that I mentioned earlier. It is a, a database of agents. You can put in your queries, you can uh, keep track of them. You can, if you get the um, premium version, you can see all sorts of information. Um, the book, Bookends is a literary agency and they have a YouTube channel. Uh, they've got some useful information on there if you like videos. Um, earn out calculator, that's quite fun. You put in your advance, it tells you how many books you've got to sell to earn out. Um, yeah. And Canva, every author I know does yeah. all their little social media marketing on Canva. Mm -hmm. I love Canva. Need to so, so, so sure you have to pay for your whole time. Tired of playing, I haven't really put that in it. No, but yeah, it's good for um, doing more so or something. Pro, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Any more questions? Can I get a side book part? Depend on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, That's all the questions. Uh, I know that it's possible to get locked out of certain genres, yeah. but you can, if you switch genres, you yes. get back into publishing. Yeah, so well, what can, if your book doesn't do well, yeah, yeah this is my content. Yes. Yes. Sorry, Katie. Yeah, you Do you have any software recommendations for writing manuscripts? Software. <laughs> <laughs> I write every single month of Word. Um, I know people swear by Scrivener, but I, I've never mm. seen it. Word does fine for me. I say Canva for social media stuff. Um, yeah, I, 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 the Office package is is all I tend to use. Um, you can set up Word, so you can set it up with a, a default manuscript. So you click. Manuscript and it's all laid out for you already. So, yeah, I, I, I don't tend to use anything other than that. Will publishers expect back and forth in Word and things like that? Will publishers expect? Will publishers and editors expect Word for their back and forth? Yeah, generally they, they expect um, a Word document. So, you can use, like, if you've got Google Docs, you can save things as a .doc. Um, so, you can use other software, but it's generally it's a Word document or a PDF to go back and forth. Okay, thank you. Very much. I'll be racing off in a minute, but I'll just ask one before I run the yeah. Who's your favourite author currently? Author currently? Um, or authors, if you find that easier. So, there's, um, there's quite a few coming out from people that I know that I'm going to recommend. Oh, yes, so, um, Cascade Failure is a, if you like, like um, Killjoys fun. and Firefly and that kind of yes. sci-fi, uh, Cascade Failure is by Ellen Sargas. It's coming out in March. 
the the Sims on their bones by Laura Samatin is a amazing um, second world fantasy with a sort of Jewish theme. Um, that's really good. Um, the Lord of the Empty Isles um, is a I think it's a side fantasy. Um, I can't remember how exactly how they picture it, but it's well, it's got curse bonds and found family. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, those, those are those are three that are, are worth mm -hmm. picking up. They're, they're all coming out fairly soon. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll add you on social media. Thank you so yes, much. Yes. I'm yeah. so sorry to write off. That's all right. Yes. I don't want to be, get a huge. Do you find that there's more resistance to genre fiction um, authors from agents and publishers and things? I don't. It's been quite hard for me to sort of find ones that are looking for things like fantasy and sci-fi. Really? I, yeah. I kind of found the other, but I, I was mostly looking for American agents. Mm. Oh, right. I, I found that the British ones were much harder to find, pin down what they wanted. Mm. Um, mm. They're, they're, I was never quite sure what they wanted for a cover letter. I've been told it's just, it's just the standard query, but I was always a bit more uncertain about the, the British ones. But yeah, there are. But I mean, I, I think if you use, if you do things like looking books in the books um, and use Query Tracker and Manuscript Specialist, you should be able to find a good number. Um, and then, but you don't want to re reference them on their website because you know things are not always up to date. Yeah. But yeah, you should. Those, those three things should get you a good list. Anyone else? Do we have like a couple of minutes? I'll do one of the interviews because they won't be spoilers. So basically, the book starts off with the main couple married, um, and there are little interviews in between. About. You mentioned the picture, but you can find something else. Yes, something else. Yeah. So when, when, I, when I was querying it, the picture was one of the things. Where are the inserts? I could guess because it's a romance novel. It's not really yeah. very good track fans of The Witcher. So they're well, not. I know, but they were just a bit more guys of a certain demographic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can't all have it. Maybe we can't all have it. It's just like, you know, we can't all have it. Well, it's a short one. So, um, I apologise. I, I, I don't have a great reading voice, but, um, okay, so this is 17 months before the book starts. Logan settled into a chair by the fire. The heat licked at him, raising the sweat on his brow, but he didn't care. After the last few days of tramping through the cold and the wet, he put up with being too warm. Ian was heavy with noise, voices raised in good cheer. He tuned them out and focused on the plate of meat and the tangent in front of him. A man could not ask for much more. His life was perfect. The seat taken. He looked up, recognising the voice, but needing to see the face just the same. The bar looked thinner than he had previously, and his nose had been broken at some point. It had been set carefully, a pretty face was an important commodity to the bar, but Logan couldn't help noticing the slight misalignment. The staring, like I said, the corner of his mouth twitching. Logan cleared his throat. The seat's free for a friend. Thanks. Like I started to sit, but Logan grabbed his wrist. A friend would bring ale. <laughs> My pie caught the tank eye of the serving woman and she set a couple of tankers down on the table. He flicked her a coin and she snatched it out the air. Logan pulled both vessels towards him. So, what brings you out here, Pi? My pie made a grab from the tankers and stopped. He called me Pi. His eyes were wide. What's your name, isn't it? Logan took a drink. Well, no, but that's beside the point. You normally just call me Bard. He imitated <laughs> Logan's low infection. Is that a problem? Logan asked slowly. No. Do it again. <laughs> 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 